Hello. Hello, as promised, back on again to go through some questions. So I'll just wait for a few more people to join and then we can get cracking. Um, but you can um, ask away in the comments as well um, and I can answer you live, hopefully. Um, but yeah, thanks to everyone that has asked questions. I've got a nice little list here. Um, so that'll be good to go through. Um, another lovely sunny day um, in sunny Bristol. So things are definitely looking more positive. So again, oh, I'm caught in my watch. Um, again, I'll run through my outfit, what I'm wearing um, to save you asking questions. Um, so I am wearing a rather strange combo, maybe, um, but I like it. So it is the Wilder blouse version. So it's got the little, um, tie bit there um, and I'm wearing it um, this is a um, crepe chiffon and um, we're out of stock of this one we do have lots of other colors though um, and I do mine with a little elasticated sleeve so I lengthen the sleeves and just do a little poofy sleeve like that um, so it's just the um, blouse version and then this is the um, uh, no jenny overalls um so this is from a stretch cotton sateen um and i love these and i can only wear them when it's guaranteed not to rain because they're the full length ones and they get very like 90s style um you know bogged down in the rain with the flares but i do love them um and actually this goes quite nicely segues quite nicely into um a question that somebody had asked but also um, Pink Hope Club, me made badge. Um, somebody had asked um, how to incorporate leopard print or animal print into their wardrobe if you're not used to wearing it. Um, so I think there's a couple of different options. If you've got something like this, is that something I remember wearing jeans that sucked up all the rain? Yeah, yeah, 90s child. <laughs> um, well, not 90s child, but you know, teenager in the 90s um, yeah so if you've got something like this you can wear it with just a plain top that would work really well but I quite like the kind of clashy print kind of thing so I think mean, it's quite a bold move but I think that kind of um, I think it, it works quite nicely but I think you kind of you're gonna want to um, just experiment and see what colors work really well I think obviously black would go with this white would go with this a kind of tan color but also something like a bright pop of pink would also work really well with it so just kind of think about um what kind of color tones work nicely um, and depending on, on what you're wearing so you can either you know full um leopard print outfit if it's a dress or something and then just tights um or if you're going to be layering pieces just think about maybe a bit more neutral palette behind it so i hope that one helps um so next question we had was what's the best jersey to work with for a beginner to make a t-shirt with so when people um come in and they ask about jerseys and they're like oh i'm really scared of sewing with jersey so i'm going to avoid it i think it's a bit of a myth i think once you get um started with jersey projects um are actually much quicker um, to, to make less fitting issues involved because of the stretch. So I think um, once you kind of become comfortable with it, I think Jersey makes a really um, nice and quick and easy. So I would say to start off with, if you're new to Jersey altogether, then a Ponte Roma is a great place to start. It's a nice stable knit. It's generally not gonna curl too much. It's gonna kind of sit where you put it um and it's still got that stretch so something like this one this is called the charlotte ponty so it's got a nice pattern on it it's like burgundy flowers um so you can see it's still got a nice amount of stretch but it's not going to be um sort of misbehaving and being difficult to cut so and that's the kind of thing I would recommend. Patterns that work well for a Ponty would be something like Zadie. The um, Tilly in the Buttons Coco is also very good for Ponty. 
the South Bank sweater. Any kind of sweater patterns work really well for Ponty. It's just a slightly different look, like a bit more of a smart look. Um, so I wouldn't necessarily say Ponty for a t-shirt, but as, as a place to start for Jersey, I think that works really well. Um, but more t-shirt fabrics. So I think you're going to want to avoid viscose jersey for um, beginners because that can be a little bit more shifty to cut out. Um, so something like a good stable cotton jersey. So 95% cotton, 5% elastane. So something like this. This is our zebra khaki jersey. So you're not going to need to pattern match anything. You don't need to worry about that. Um, good amount of stretch and recovery, and it's going to look good as a t-shirt. So um, obviously it's jersey, so it's not going to fray. You can use a normal sewing machine. Just make sure you use a zigzag stitch. And when, you, um, when you're first starting out, test your stitches on a scrap piece of jersey, on the jersey you're working with. So do various different widths of um, zigzag and then really pull that seam to make sure it's not going to pop the stitches. Um, obviously if you've got an overlocker you can go straight on to overlocking and once you do that you will never look back because <laughs> it's very very quick and easy. So that that question hopefully answered. Uh, next is Oh, this was quite an interesting one. So a pattern to combine two of the leopard prints. Um, so there is a dress pattern at the moment, which I am desperate to try out. It looks beautiful. I don't have an image, it's a PDF only, but it is called the Gin and Tonic Dress um, by Our Lady of Leisure. And it's sort of split down the middle in the styling photos and it's got two, and it's got sort of a tie bit in the middle. And it's got two different um, two different colours, so plain fabrics, two different colours. Um, so I think that could work amazingly. So um, if you've got fabrics that are the same design, just different colourways, that could look really stunning. I mean, this would be really bold, but you could also do it in like two different colours of chambray, or you could do one side plain, one side, um, like leopard print or something like that i'm just um having a little look Ooh. so these two would be stunning um when i saw these two in and i i'd just seen the picture of the gin and tonic dress and i thought yes that would work really nicely sorry i can see there are a couple of questions um ba -ba -ba -ba. Uh, is that fabric Maasai Deadstock? I don't know which fabric you mean. Sorry. Um, let me know which one. Um, so, oh yes, uh, and someone else had asked about chambre patterns. So, uh, what fabric were the zebra print? The zebra um, one that I just held up, the pink and the green. Um, these two. Are, these are rayons so it's called the rose zebra rayon and the teal zebra rayon um, but if you meant this one then this is the zebra khaki um, zebra khaki jersey yes okay um, okay back back in the room um, so chambres. So um, I think they work really nicely for shirts, shirt dresses, that kind of thing. Um, and I think um, so. A couple of patterns here from the Avid Seamstress, which would work really nicely in chambre. So this one is called the sheath dress. It's a really pretty one. You can have it with elastic around the waist or without. Um, it's got lovely pockets as well, um, or something like the day dress. Again, pockets, we all love pockets. Um, so something like that, kind of nice casual. I had a really nice dress from Oasis years and years ago. It was very similar to that in a chambray. 
and I've always kind of been looking to recreate that. Um, but other patterns. Sorry, just coming back. Uh, so a nice easy one would be the Dominique skirt. That works nicely in a chambray denim. 15. See, that's styled on the front with, and this is actually one of our fabrics on the front. This is um, a tensile denim. Uh, but, it's, you know, chambray is very, very similar. Um, or the Rosa shirt, something like that would work. Um, working with, right, so we've talked about working leopard print into your wardrobe. Um, pattern recommendations for the leopard prints. So, um, if you haven't already seen them, we had a whole bunch of leopard prints in um, this week. So, something like this one, which is the rayon. Oh my God, it's so lovely. So something like the indigo pattern would work really nicely for this. So something that's got movement and drape, that needs movement and drape. Um, you've also got the wilder gown. So there's many different versions of this. You've got the blouse version, the kind of knee length dress, and then the maxi dress. Um, oh yes, yeah, someone's just said they've looked at the gin and tonic um, and um, would definitely work in those two zebras, yes. Um, yes, yeah, so something like that, something loose and flowy. I love the chalk and notch fringe dress for a good rayon as well. Um, it's a really pretty pattern, quite underrated. Um, so yeah, you can see lots of lovely movement, um, but also good for a shirt or a blouse. Um, so you've got things like the cello top or the dress version of that would look nice in this. Um, also, I mean, something stunning like the magnolia dress from Deer and Doe would look beautiful in one of these, like really nice and bold. Um, I mean, you can, st you can still make things like the day dress in a rayon. It's just going to be fotier on you rather than more structured um, with a cotton. Then for something like the cotton jerseys so again great for t-shirts so you've got things like the Tilly and the Buttons Agnes top you've got the Jennifer Lauren Gable tee or you you could I mean I'd make a Billy sweatshirt out of this I've made one out of a cotton jersey like this and it worked really well because it um, it holds the gathers really nicely in the sleeves and the um, poofy cuffs as well um, so if you want a lighter weight sweatshirt, you could make a billy or something like that in this. Um, I'm actually thinking the Helen's Closet um, Avery leggings. Um, so I want to try that pattern out. So I think it's got good a good amount of stretch in them and it would look pretty awesome as leggings. Um, so that's these ones, dress or top. Which? Uh, dress or top for which? Little, sew, little sewing bug. Which pattern, sorry. Um, so that's those. The, the viscose jerseys that we had in. Oh, the billy. Um, I'd go probably just the top version for the billy. Um, I think you'd be better off with a sort of sweatshirting fabric for the dress. Um, so the viscose jerseys, they've got more drape to them, so they would work nicely for, the word I couldn't remember yesterday was cowl neck, a cowl neck top. Um, and that, so I think this would work nicely for the bateen dress, so there's a jersey hack of that. This is very similar to the fabric I used actually for mine. Um, I do have a blog post on it, probably two summers ago maybe, who knows, who knows what time is anymore. Um, 
So this would also work nicely for the Mayfair dress by Nina Lee. Anything that's just kind of got some gathers or just needs a little bit of draper movement to it would work really nicely for this. But um, also like a jumpsuit would work nicely. The Deer and Dove Sorocco would work for this one. It's got plenty of stretch to it. Um, so a nice lightweight summer jumpsuit as well. Um, now I'm losing where I put fabric. Here we are. So we had another question. I've lost, lost my, li li uh, my list of questions now. Who knows? I will try and remember them. Who knows where they went? Probably caught up in the fabric somewhere. Anyway, anyway, doesn't matter, it's fine. And uh, we had another question about um, fabrics for the Jenny overalls, which I'm wearing. So this one will be perfect for the Jennies. This is a very fine needle cord. You probably can't even see the needle cord, it's so fine. Um, oh, we will come back to the Sirocco fabrics. Bear with me, we'll come back to that. Um, yeah, so um, this would work really nicely for the Jennies, any kind of um more structured it's not it's still got some drape to it it's not hugely structured but um sorry just reading um but um yeah it would work really nicely for trousers dungarees um the cleo also would work nicely in that so any kind of dungaree trousery type things or um a skirt as well would be nice but i would still say that this would work for um the Rosa shirt, I've made a um, Rosa shirt dress in something very similar to this and it worked out really nicely. Um, where did my question list go? Who knows? Who knows? Um, I know there was a question on the difference between sewing um, with rayon and cotton. So cotton tends to be much better behaved, much more stable. Um, so when you're cutting out, you're going to find that it sits nicer on the table. It doesn't shift around so much. You can kind of get the edges to line up and they stay where you put them, which is lovely. And when you cut the pieces out, if you're cutting out square or lines, they tend to stay as lines. I tend to find with rayons when you do that, so you might cut out a pocket piece and think it's like that and whoop, it ends up a bit skew with even if you use um big old pattern weights weight everything down you think you've cut it straight and then you get it and it's all a bit little bit wibbly never fear it does tend to come out all right once you sew it it just works its way out and you do end up sewing a, a straight line i've never actually had a problem once it's been sewn you kind of look at things and go oh that looks not quite the shape and you always find this out if you cut the interfacing um for say collars and collar stands if you cut that separately um without fusing it on first then you'll go to fuse it onto the um rayon pattern piece <laughs> like oh it's a very different shape to this one um and it's just because it just shifts around um so i don't recommend rayons for beginners I think you need to have a, at least a couple of projects under your belt first because I think if you start with something really tricky it just means you're you're not going to enjoy it you um might end up abandoning it halfway through um and it's just not going to be a nice experience for you whereas I think you'll set yourself up for success really if you work with something like a cotton lawn which is lovely to wear lovely to work with and it's just going to kind of encourage you on your sewing journey, is what I think. Um, so, yeah, I always recommend cotton lawns um, uh, or cotton poplins for beginners, depending on, the, um, depending on the pattern that they're making. So if it's something like a nice summery dress, I like say a cotton lawn. If it's something like uh, a bit more structured dress, so like the Carnaby dress or the Stevie, then a cotton poplin or a medium weight cotton for that kind of thing and you will be away but you know not to say you can't jump in with a rayon in your first project or with a slippery satin or something like that i just think you probably won't enjoy yourself as much 
Um, so I saw somebody asked for fabric recommendations for the Sirocco, so bear with me. Now, with this pattern, so I've made it a few times, it is gorgeous. Um, what you really need to do is make sure it's got 60% stretch because there's no fastening to it. So you're getting the pattern on and off over your hips. So particularly if you've got a big difference between your hips and your waist, um, you need to pay attention to that stretch. I know that some people have put a side seam zip in, which you can do if it's a stable enough knit. That's not a massive problem, but the, the pattern isn't designed um, to be done that way. I did have one fabric that I made um, so I'll go out of here it's at home um, and it didn't quite have 60% stretch on the cross grain but on the lengthwise grain it did so I cut everything else out on the um, cross grain as normal and then when it came to the waistband pieces I cut them on the lengthwise grain and it's fine I would also say I would caveat you really do need an overlocker for this pattern because that seam is put under such strain when it's going over your hips. It might just be me. I do have quite a big difference between my hip and my waist. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, you know, getting it over your bum, basically. It's really going to be put under quite a lot of strain. So to have um, an overlocked seam, which is, you know, really, really stretchy stitch, it definitely helps, I think. Because I think, yeah, the first one I made, because I was just sort of basting it together. And I know that the basting stitches that I used before I overlocked, they all popped. Um, so, fabrics to use for this one. So, I think, so bearing in mind the 60% stretch rule, I think it would look amazing in one of the leopard prints. So, either the cotton jerseys or the rayons. <laughs> If you like a nice big bold print um i also think a nice summer reach the short version would be cute in that as well this is um the pink floral jersey sorry i should say the names for you it could also be nice in something like a modal jersey that's got lots of stretch so we've got Someone said, I made one in a black jersey I bought from you a couple of years ago. Ah, oh, good. Sometimes just a plain colour is nice. I made a black one. Um, and I don't wear it that often because I made it slightly cropped. And I can only wear cropped things if it's really sunny. Um, but yeah, that's got a good amount of stretch. And it would have like the nice sort of drape from the, for the front. So we've got um, the modal jersey in a couple of plain colours. And then we also have... of prints as well so that's a nice rust color with flowers and that is a beautiful pale gray with white sort of leopard print on that one they would work nicely just move these out of the way um but yeah any any kind of cotton jersey just make sure it's got enough stretch um really that would also be nice for Sirocco like a nice safari themed. Hmm. Um, I'm trying to think of the other questions. I'm ever so sorry, because I can't go back into my um, Instagram to check the questions. So I've written them down and I don't know where the piece of paper's gone. Because that's ridiculous. Never mind, it's fine, it's fine. Um, let me go back through the patterns and see if anything... Um, anything jogs my memory so I know Jenny asked about magnolia dress fabrics um, so something for a really beautiful special occasion magnolia oh, there it is there it's so pretty so I think you want something really floaty and delicious so if you wanted to go big and bold because there's nice expanse of fabric on it something like this one this it is the ruby star let me read out to you the airflow bloom rayon it's so pretty 
Um, so I had um, my carnaby dress that I made from the cotton version of this on yesterday. It's such a beautiful print. A really big, big print. Well, it's very nice. Um, that kind of thing. But yeah, I think a rayon would work really, really nicely for um, Magnolia. Um, or if you wanted more of a sort of summery colour, you've got this one. This is a Lady McElroy one. Could you show us the stretch denims and what jeans patterns they would be suitable for? Yes, bear with me. Um, so, yeah, that would also work nicely for a springtime kind of thing. That one is called the Serenity Viscous. This one here. It's a, I think the Magnolia is a really good opportunity to show off a beautifully patterned fabric. That one would also go nicely. This one's another rayon. It is called the Bethany rayon. There we go, really beautiful muted colours in that one. And these blossoms all over it. There we go. So, denims, denims, let's talk denims. So we have going from the chambres. Um, so these these are technically denims, cotton denims. So these don't have any stretch in them, but these are much lighter weight. But you can use them for shirts or shirt dresses um, or other dresses that need a little tiny bit of structure. Um, but these won't have any stretch in them. You could still make trousers out of chambray or a jumpsuit um go and check out alice from polka dot palace she's just made a jumpsuit out of this one and it looks beautiful on her really really stunning she's done it with kind of pops of yellow on it as well um so that um i mean you could still wear something like the um like a lighter weight pair of the um lander pants that's what i'm thinking um the true bias lander pants would also work yeah in something like that then the new denims that we had in yesterday not yesterday and um, this week so these are i think they're a nine ounce denim um, i think that's right um so they do have a good amount of stretch in them. So they've got elastane in them. You can see that there. So I would use these. So um, the um, ginger jeans pattern would work well for this. Um, the Megan ne Nielsen Dawn jeans. Although I don't know if that one needs stretch. I can't remember. We don't have it in stock right now. Um, but, uh, oh yes, yeah, Shambo jumpsuit, definitely. Um, so, um, oh, bit of thread, bit of thread. Um, but yeah, I think the classic kind of ginger jeans with the stretch in them, there's a cashmere pair as well, which would work well. I can't remember what they're called. Um, or you've got the um, Jenny um, pattern or the Sasha pattern from Closet Core. They would both work for this kind of denim because um, they need a little bit of stretch in them. The Mila dungarees would also work and that needs a little bit of stretch. Um, is it the Ash jeans or the Dawn jeans that need stretch? I can't remember. I can't remember off the top of my head and you're all on my phone so I can't look anything up. <laughs> um, so we've got that um, denim in a grey or in a black. Um, Then we've got, this is a Lily McElroy denim. This is called the Cottesmore denim. Megan Nielsen jean pattern. I think it's called Ash that needs stretch. There we go. Ash one needs stretch. <laughs> um, the Morgans from Closet Core don't want stretch. 
So this this one, um, the Cottage Mall, it do, it does have some stretch, but like one percent. It's not a huge amount. So I think if you are going to be making something like the gingers that need a bit of stretch you're going to need to base them together i mean to be fair with all the different denims you need to always base them together just to check the fit because it really varies denim to denim you can make it work um you just need to just base fit them first um so this is a gorgeous gray color i'm sort of coming out a little bit washed out here because of the window um but yeah this is a slightly thicker weight denim very nice and smooth um, so it'd be lovely against the skin. I am obsessed with my clothes, feeling nice. Um, right, that one. Then... We have this beautiful... Um, it's almost like a cobalt blue denim. It's really, really bright. Um, so again, this has some stretch in it. It's um, it's a, more of a rigid denim. I think it would work well for the um, dawn jeans. I think it would work. What's the fabric of your dungarees? We don't have this one in stock anymore. I'm very sorry. These are the Jenny overalls. It's um, just double check because we did get it back in at one point. No, it has all gone. It's a cotton sateen. Um, we have. some of this one which is quite similar um, this is called the Cara Jade Cotton Drill that would work well as well and also you could wear that for jeans um, so yeah this um, would also work well for the um, oh that's right um, if this would work for the gingers it would work for um, any of the patterns that I've kind of talked about before um, <clears throat> But yeah, just check on the back of the pattern to see what kind of stretch percentage it needs. Um, and and then, as I said, I, I would always base jeans together. Um, and we've got a couple of lighter um, colour and lighter weight denims as well for the summer. So this actually has a really good stretch to it this is our mint stretch denim um so can you see that color so yeah nice for a summery pair of trousers very pretty and again good for jeans dungarees that kind of thing and we also have a pale pink the shop's going to be trashed <laughs> me picking up fabrics from everywhere right yeah that's the pale pink there and again nice amount of stretch in that so still good for the gingers still good for um any of the dungarees that need a little bit of stretch in them um i remember one of the questions it was from astrid and it was what um what fabric um are my kittens what, what is their favorite fabric <laughs> Um, now they're not allowed in the shop like Jasmine used to be because um, they are troublemakers and you would end up with, I don't know, kittens on the top of everything. Um, but um, for me, their favourite fabric is sweatshirting. So I think they would love this one. This is our um, fleece back sweatshirting. Um, I actually made them a couple of blankets when they were little out of um, this fabric uh, with a different colour backing on it um, and just put bias trim around the edges of it and they loved it so they do enjoy sleeping on that. <clears throat> so I know that is definitely one of their favourites and it's my favourite if I'm wearing a sweatshirt then I don't mind them clambering all over me. If I'm wearing a rayon it's a very different story and I have <laughs> ended up with uh, they had a uh, one stage where they were very much into leaping on your back um as a surprise um and uh yeah wore a rayon blouse once when that happened and that was not fun um so yeah i prefer them around sweatshirting and i've just um just <laughs> 
I've just got some of this off the line um, because I'm going to make a cardigan out of it. So this is the um, grey sweat in it and I brought it back in and Audrey in particular seemed very taken with this one. So also kitten approved. Um, right, are there any more questions? Let me have a look. I've been talking for ages. Um, no, I think we're good. Um, so, yes, I hope you enjoyed this little... Um, oh, yes, you can. I've got another question. Um, I hope you enjoyed this little kind of chatty session. Um, I'm going to start doing some more um, Instagram Live things um, as we kind of... We've got the next... Um, month or so before things start opening back up again and I think we just need some little things to keep us going um just while we wait patiently for things to open back up again um so somebody asked to see this beauty so the Florida Palms fabric from Ruby Star oh my god it's so pretty, it's so pretty. Right, I'm gonna get it very close to you now. So you can see in the background, it's got little crescent moons and stars, which is such a beautiful detail. And then it's a very pretty lilac with the gold details. You can see it glinting in the sun there. And then a navy with this lovely sort of purpley blue um, design in the background. So it would be good for shirt patterns, um, dresses. So I've actually got um, a different design of this um, that I've been trying to decide what to make out of it at the moment. Um, so my choices were the Orsula dress from By Hand London. Um, you don't see people talking about that one, but it's a really stunning pattern. Um, the Abbott Seamstress Day dress. This one. Um, the Rosa shirt dress, mm -mm. that one, but a sleeveless version, or the um, Carnaby dress, Nina Lee. Um, and I know I've got a lot of Carnaby, so I kind of didn't necessarily want to make that one again. So I think I'm going to go with the Rosa, um, because I just think that will be a nice kind of um, transitional piece, really. Um, so, yes, I am going to, um, if there's no more questions, I will sign off from here. But yes, I hope you're doing exciting things this weekend. Well, you know, as exciting as being in the houses, but, you know, maybe get out in the garden, have a nice little sunny walk. Um, but yes, I'm going to be, um, getting on with some sewing myself. I've got, uh, day to myself tomorrow. My other half is working, so... Um, I'm going to be hopefully sewing up the um, Tilly and the Buttons Bertha cardigan. Um, I've got that here to cut out on the big tables. And um, yeah, hopefully I can, um, if I get through that, I might be able to make a start on my Rosa shirt dress. So yeah, I hope you've got some lovely sewing plans. And um, yeah, I will talk to you all soon. Take care. Bye bye.